Hey, what's up developers? Today I'm gonna to tell you a story about how I taught myself how to program. Let's listen in. So I started programming when I was young. I actually took a QBasic class back in high school, if you can believe it or not. It was really my first exposure to programming. I had done a little tiny bit of C and C++ in high school. And then I took this QBasic class and that's kind of where I started learning to learn how to program. And I'm kind of dating myself. This was the 90s, if you can believe it or not. So the late 90s. And that was uh, the QBasic class. It was like the last time they actually taught that class at my school. So I, I just got in right before they started teaching more traditional like web development and Java classes in my high school. So that was that was definitely an interesting thing. But the one time I actually, I don't really consider that where I taught myself how to program. The one time I really taught myself to program was I was in, I think it was my junior year of high school and I was in an English class. And in that English class, it was one of those classes that you took because it was really easy and everybody knew the professor graded pretty easily and didn't hand out many tests or quizzes. Um, in fact, he only had really one big test and that was the end of the semester. So the class was perfect for me because I had a pretty heavy load of AP classes and a pretty heavy load of math and stuff like that. So I wanted an easy class for the semester. So I took this English class and it was more, it was not the like core English class that you have to take in high school. It was, I don't know, it was like journalism or something like that. So I, I took the class and in the middle of it, uh, he told us about the final assignment and in this class, you pretty much all you had to do was read these books and then come in and to class and be ready to discuss the books that you read. And it felt more like a, I don't know, like a college, I don't know, classroom where you just kind of, everybody just talked and we had a really good class. Everybody's really engaged and it didn't require a ton of BS homework every day. And it was perfect for my schedule, as I said before. So I learned about the final like halfway through the class and the teacher said you had to write like I think it was like a 10 page final. It You had to take every book that you learned that semester or we read and then took the discussions and you had to put it into this really big paper. And like I said, it was about 10, 10 pages long, which isn't terrible. But for that time, I was so busy, I didn't really want to do it. So it was probably like the week before the semester ends and the papers due in like five days. And I finally, being the slacker I am, finally decided to work on it. And I realized there is no way I'm going to get a 10 page paper written in five days. I decided to do something different. And this was actually maybe a little bit more novel back in the day. I decided to, instead of turning in a 10 page paper, to create a web page. And this web page would be uh, encompassing all the readings that I've done and it would be interactive. And I had all these grand schemes of how I wanted to put it up and what I wanted to do. And since this is like the late 90s, you know, it wasn't as quite quite, quite saturated and crazy as it is now online and web. And basically, if you knew just HTML and CSS, you create a web page. I started, uh, I went to the library and I got the books out on HTML, CSS, and I was studying them. And then I realized once again, I didn't have enough time to learn everything about HTML and CSS in two days or five days, because this is the first website I've ever created really. So I was actually, once again, I'm dating myself. I was in a Quake clan, if you can believe it or not. So Quake was a first person shooter made by id Software. And I think they might've been up to Quake 2 or Quake 3 back then. And we fought other Quake clans online. And this was in the days of dial up internet. And we had low ping bastards, LPBs, and then high ping bastards. And I played on a 56K modem. So I was considered an HPB, a high ping bastard. And we would fight these other clans and you'd always have like, you always have like one or two people in the other clan that had, they were li really low ping because they had a real fast speed connection to the internet. And a lot of times back then, those people would have uh, ISDN lines, which would cost, you know, a thousand dollars a month, something like that. So, I mean, it was, I have quite a bit of stories on that. If you ever want to hear any stories about the Quake days, back in the day. Um, I also went to land nights or net nights uh, where we, me and about 20 other friends, some from high school, some a little older in college, we would get together at some guy's garage. We would network all our computers up and we would play Warcraft and Quake 3 and Quake 2 
It was pretty amazing. I think I have some pictures back from those days too. I contacted my, my Quake clan leader because he had put up a website and it was all written in HTML, CSS. And I asked him for help because he was like the only guy at the time that I knew how to, that knew how to do websites. And he said he didn't have time to help me, but he could send me the source code for our Quake clan site. And if you can imagine, the Quake clan site had all these gargoyles and devils, and it had this really super dark theme to it. And it, you know, it didn't look appropriate to turn in for an assignment for school. So I got it, and I literally uh, spent probably probably two nights on it, and I deleted it out. It was a really simple site, it had different frames, it had a frame on the left side and a frame up top, if you can remember those types of sites. Then it had like five links, and like one was about, and then home, and then, um, I don't remember, it was like a match coming up matches. So I went in through the HTML, CSS, I was like reading my book every, you know, every chance I could get, I went in, deleted all the links, and then I put my name and a really crappy logo that I think I made in Photoshop or something. I put that atop. I left like a lot of the different gargoyle <laughs> pictures and stuff on there, and I wrote probably three paragraphs of text. So the web page was literally my logo that I made in Photoshop in 20 minutes at the top, and then five paragraphs of text, which I had written hastily which was supposed to encompass the last, you know, five books I read in the group discussions that we had in the class. And uh, I went ahead and got a free GeoCity site that, uh, that I signed up for. GeoCities used to be a free hosting website before, I don't know, WordPress and all these other free sites came out. And I hosted my site on GeoCities with my one page, five paragraphs, my logo. And I just like barely got it done in time. So I did learn a lot of HTML, CSS and how to like kind of position things and be able to delete things out. And it didn't look too good. It was all dark. It still kind of, kind of looked like a Quake site that I just ripped off. I turned it in. So I, I, I literally printed out one piece of paper with one paragraph saying, I decided to do something different in this class. Instead of turning in a 10 page paper, I created a web page. Here it is, here's the URL, you know, geocities.com slash tiny city slash, I mean, this like huge URL that's 20 characters long. I was worried, I was actually worried at the time that he was gonna have trouble ty typing that all in. In fact, I think I, I think we, he did have an email back then, so I think I emailed it to, to him. And I turned it in and I didn't hear anything and I was worried. And so I think it was like the last day of class he had me stay, He right, everybody gets dismissed, and he had me stay over. And I'm thinking, uh-oh. Uh, so he, he comes up to me and says, hey, I got your submission for the for the assignment. You know, that's really thinking out of the box, but, you know, why did you make it so dark? Why did you have these gargoyles and, and demons in it? And I said, well, you know, I'm really into this game called Quake, and I explained to him all about Quake and Quake 3, and I talked to him a little about clans. And I didn't tell him I obviously grabbed a homepage from someone else and, and just redid it. And he's like, oh, wow. And he was, surprisingly, he was really cool with it. And he's like, well, that was kind of weird, but I'm going to give it to you for creativity. You got an A on the assignment. And I was like, yes. And of course, in that chant, and, and since I got an A on the assignment, I got an A in the class. And the rest was history. Now, I, <laughs> obviously, I don't recommend that same type of way of learning. But, you know, it worked for me. And in fact, I do have another story where I actually really got into web development. And that was many years later. Later, I actually, after the journalism class and turning in the web page the night before it was due, I kind of learned my lesson and decided to actually learn HTML, CSS, but I didn't really get that into it until years later. So if you have a story like that, you know, leave, uh, leave a comment below of what your crazy story is, how did you learn web development? I mean, did it help you in school at all? Did you guys turn in assignments using web pages like I did? If you have uh, any questions, yeah, leave a comment below and click that subscribe button, that really helps me. And by the way, Udemy is having a sale. Um, they also have some great courses. I have some links below. Thanks, take care.